let's stay on the situation in Sydney. For more, I'm joined by Jihad Dib, who's the New South Wales Labor member for Lakemba. Welcome to the program. As we just heard from our reporter, the outbreak has moved to the southwest of Sydney. How important is it that authorities get the right messages, the health messages across to communities there? And are you confident they've done that? Hi, Patricia. Thanks for having me. Look, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the head. It's actually all about the messaging. The messaging is so incredibly important. Um, you know, these messages have to be distilled into something that's quite simple, quite easy to understand and not vague. And I think that's the big challenge for everybody. I mean, notwithstanding that, um, New South Wales and South West Sydney is obviously a very multicultural area. So let's look a little bit outside the box in terms of how we get those messages through. I know that uh, MPs like myself and other community leaders or sports leaders or whoever it might be have actually got a really important role to play here in making sure that that message is clear. But in the message, the reasoning behind why we're doing what we're doing so that it doesn't look like just a stick. There's actually an element to it, an understanding as to why we do the things that we do. You've been posting health advice on your own Facebook page. Why have you felt the need to do that? Uh, well, look, I, it's, it's something I've always done. And I think that something like this, uh, particularly when it comes to, you know, an issue like coronavirus is not a political issue. This is a social issue. And if that means that people who follow my Facebook page or people who might listen to things that I say, uh, it's, it's really important. And what I've often done in, in, in my Facebook page is distill the message to a way that, that I know that people who follow my Facebook page would understand. I think it's incumbent on all of us to be able to do whatever it is that we can. Obviously, I engage well with people. Some people ask me questions and I'll get back. And uh, yesterday, somebody put on my page if I could you know, deliver a same video message but in, an, in another language. And I'm fortunate enough that I could speak another language. Uh, not so well, but I, I, I can speak another language and, and I'll do that. But um, you know, part of it is that I saw maybe that there was a bit of a shortfall there. And if if I can actually use my profile and, and certainly my uh, my my media platforms to be able to do that, then I will. Well, let's talk about this police operation that's been announced this afternoon. A hundred extra police from 7am tomorrow in southwestern Sydney. Do you support this police operation? Well, look, I've just I've just heard about that. Um, obviously, I haven't come across it yet, um, and it's just basically come up in the last half an hour or so. And there's been a number of things I'll do, but I mean, I'll always say this with anything. I think while it's important to have compliance, it really is important. It's about everyone's safety and making sure that that things are right. What we need to do is we also need to make sure that we don't create it in a way that instills panic or fear, or or, or appeals to some of the. Uh, you know, I suppose some of the conspiracy theorists' ideas that, you know, this is becoming into a police state. I think the police have got a really important role to play. But obviously there's a lot of things that, that I'm not aware of that I'd like to know a bit more information. But certainly if it's about uh, making sure that people aren't out and about, then yes. But it's it's a very, very delicate situation. And I'd, I'd, I'd be urging, of course, all forms of sensibility when it comes to this. If people are really clear on what the message is, then let's appeal to their better angels to actually do the right thing. Uh, people would rightly fee, rightfully be a little bit unsure at the moment because they just don't know the details. And, and I mind myself, I, I don't know the details. I've literally just heard, heard, heard about this. Well, I'm glad the ABC is breaking the news to you. So 100 extra police. It's the first announcement I've seen of extra police during this lockdown, a really concentrated approach. And let's be clear here, it's been focused in a multicultural community. I've seen many messages saying, we didn't see this in Avalon, we didn't see this in Bondi. There is a sense that this group of people are being targeted. What's your response to that? Well, Patricia, I think yesterday, uh, and, I, and, I, and I referred this uh, conversation as somebody had with me, that um, you know, they sort of felt that the South West Sydney was being identified more than any other group. And, you know, the coronavirus spread has started in one part of Sydney and it's moved to another. And, and obviously there are people who have got concerns in terms of not only the spread of it, but the fact that it might be identified with one particular area, which then could create a stigmatism. Um, you know, I would hope that within within that, it's not a, uh, you know, there, there's a number of multicultural liaison officers and the idea is to try and help people be compliant. But if it's just about going and issuing fines, then I think that's not necessarily the right approach. But look, we've got a shadow police, obviously, Minister, who, who will speak more to that. But I, I think the community, by and large, has been, has been doing their very best to do the right thing. And certainly what uh, myself and any others are doing is trying to make sure that message is really clear as to what are the rules, what are the regulations. Uh, I imagine people would be quite concerned that, that it might mean that somebody could just go into their house, you know, to just do a check on their house or something. I, you know, this is this is me basically speaking cold off, mm. uh, you know, literally what I've just heard just a little while ago. But 
There's certainly a lot more uh, for me to learn about yeah. this. Uh, I, I think the the best bit of advice that I would give is that it's got to be done, uh, you know, with, 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 with a lot of trepidation. I don't think strong arming is uh, is the way to go, but certainly what we need to do is to make sure people are being compliant, but people will also be compliant when you give them reasons why they need to be and, uh, and make it clear. You know, if everything's just always the stick, then I don't necessarily know that that's always going to be the solution. And certainly what it could do is it could actually create a bit of a sense of angst and a sort of a sense of isolation. And remember, if we're all in this together, then we're all in it together, not mm. one group separate to another. And this is the issue, isn't it? Because extra police weren't sent into Bondi, there is the sense, the optics look like this multicultural part of Sydney is being targeted in a different way. Well, look, I mean, and I probably sound like a politician now, but I, I don't really do that. Don't, don't do that. No, 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 and I don't. And you know me well enough that I don't do that. I'm pretty, pretty frank, but I actually genuinely don't know all of the details yet. I don't know what the details are, but certainly people would be concerned about it. And I'm sure that I'll be getting phone calls from people this afternoon who say, what's going on? And, and I'm just going to say, I don't know. I'll find out. And the same advice. I, what I've just said is the same advice that I would give to anybody. And I, would, and I don't want to be along party lines. I want to make sure that this is the right thing for the community. But certainly, if it's about saying we're going to put an extra whole heap of police because, you know, we don't trust this community, then I, then I really worry about that. Mm. And, that, and that's, that's, as I say, the optics uh, doesn't mean that's the methodology. Uh, the reason they may mm. have decided is because they know that it's growing out of control and they're trying to target the area. But certainly the optics do matter when you are trying to create the sense of we're all in this together, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's lots of different ways, too, to get the message out. You know, there's community leaders, there's sports leaders, there's your local MPs, there's, you know, your schools, your businesses. There's lots of different ways to try and get the message out. I don't think people would have seen this coming. Um, I know that uh, certainly the language changed a great deal in from yesterday's press conference to today's press conference. Um, but you're right, the, 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 op the optics are a little bit of a worry. And I would imagine that people like myself who live... You know, let, let's not forget these, these three LGAs cover a population almost of one million people. So we're talking quite a substantial part of Sydney here. It's not like, you know, a couple of little suburbs. These, these are pretty substantial parts of Sydney. And, you know, we've just got to make sure that the message is right. And it doesn't seem that, you know, you know, it's, it's your fault. And if this goes wrong, then, you know, you're going to cop the fine and, you know, we're going to be having police roaming around. That could be a bad optic. And that's why then I think the really important thing is how that message is communicated and making sure that if it's going to be some of the some of the local police officers, are we using police liaison officers? Are we using people who are there to try and engage? Are they there to just give the fine or they try to give people the encouragement to just, okay, do the right thing. Someone doesn't have a mask, this is what you need to do. But if it's, that's, that's where, and I'll leave that for the experts, the mm. people who are in charge of this to make sure they do it. But that's, that's, that's a pretty common sense approach in terms of how you manage things, the communication, the methodology is incredibly important, but also bring people along on that journey. If if we have a if there's a feel in the community where some people feel that you know it's it's the the police against them, then that actually undermines an incredible amount of hard work that's happened between the community and the police over many many years. And th these are some of the side issues that we need to consider as well. Look, uh, look, I watched the Melbourne uh, long lockdown very closely because that's where I live, as well as being obviously a, a reporter. And it seems to me that some of the same mistakes are being made when the big towers were locked down, the multicultural communications were very poor, and there was a sense of a targeting of ethnic communities. Um, this, not the same sense that people felt in some of the more Anglo-Saxon suburbs. Are you worried that some of the mistakes are being duplicated here? I, I think certainly the, the, the mistake of communication is something that the government's been working on and uh, and not people are trying to help out as much as they possibly can. I mean, let, let's not assume that anybody who might, you know, come from non-English speaking background is different. I come from non-English speaking background, a set of my parents. I'll use the internet. They don't. I watch the ABC for the press conference. They don't. So there's other ways for them to be able to get uh, the messages across and that's what's really important so what we need to do before we might say this group is doing the wrong thing we need to ask ourselves are we actually getting the message to this group in the way that one they can understand two they can digest and three that they can actually feel like they're part of the solution and that's where i think that there's a real there's a real challenge there so you know sometimes it might seem that 
you know, a particular community group might be doing the wrong thing. And it'd be very easy for people to say, oh, it's that group and it's the others and use a divisive kind of an approach. But what we need to do is come back to the first question. Have we actually communicated this in a way that everybody could do it? And to, to give you one, I mean, I, I use for give you an example. Everyone can do what, what they can do. I speak Arabic, so I'm going to jump on the Arabic radio as I have and just say, this is what the rules are. This is why we're doing it. You know, we know that it's really important for you to be part, you know, families and extended families are really important. But, you know, we want you to limit this because it's actually dangerous. If I didn't do that and I just said, well, this is what the rules said and you should have seen it on the internet, then I'm kind of almost setting people up to fail and we don't want people to fail in it. Jihad, I would hate someone to put me on the spot to speak Greek but I'm going to make you send that message in Arabic on this show now because, you know, we have people who watch who their first language is Arabic, it's not English. Yeah. What do you say to them yeah, about okay. following these rules and why it's so important? Uh, OK. Well, well, you have put me on a spot, but I'll try it out. My parents, I'm sure, are going to abuse me afterwards. Yeah, but, I know um, how you feel. That's why I felt bad like, asking. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have run away from Arabic school as a kid. <laughs> um, أولا بدي لكم مرحبا وبدي رجيكم قد ما فيكم بليز انتبهوا على حولكم في عندنا هالرولز لازم ننتبه من هذا المرض الكورونا فايروس في هلا انه لازم نضل بالبيت واذا بدنا نترك البيت نترك البيت مشان نزور الدكتور او بدنا نجيب التيست على الكورونا فايروس او مشان الطعام او مشان نروح نجيب اكل رجيكم ما تروحوا تعملوا زيارات ما تروحوا تزوروا عالم وعالم يجي يزوروا لعندكم اهم شيء الواحد يكون نشتغل مع بعضنا الوقت عم نشتغل مع بعضنا نحن انجيليا ان كوميونيتي هيدي هي اللي بيكون اهم شيء مشان ان شاء الله الله يفرج علينا ونروح من هالكورونا فايروس I don't know Arabic, <laughs> but you did a beautiful job, I'm sure. Uh, All uh, I can yeah, say yeah, in I, Greek I, is Efkaristo. I uh, really appreciate well, you coming on the show. That's good morning. If that is those, thank you. We're fine. Thank you, Jihad. And, and look, and I just said, just so that for the non-Arabic speakers, I basically just said, look, please follow the rules. And, you know, this is there to protect us all. Um, you can leave your home, obviously, for medical treatment, to get a test, to get a vaccination. You know, limit. You don't do your visits and don't get people to come and visit you. And together we can actually get through this. That's Absolutely. basically what I said. You've got to get through it. There's The whole country is relying on you. Thank you so much. Jihad Dib there, New South Wales Labor <laughs> member for Lakemba.